Danny, you stay out of it. That's mighty fancy shooting, Rusty. Imagine those sneaking rustlers trying to cut out part of our herd of all the... Well, next time you stay out of it. I hate to see your pretty hide get scarred up. You don't have to worry about her, Johnny. Not as long as I'm around. You keep right on worrying, Johnny. All right, Rusty? Sure, Dad. Those polecats couldn't hit a barn door. They shot your hat off. They did not. It was just riding so fast, the, w the wind blew it off. Senorita! Your sombrero. Thank you, Tomas. Rusty, you stick close to the herd till we reach Eagle Pass. Come on. Come on, Joe. Lose your saddle and six gun again? Nah, I got me a new system. I put my money on red, double up when I lose, pick up my profits when I win. I'll oh. be there to watch you lose your shirt, stupid. Ha <laughs> ha! They don't allow nice girls inside the saloon. That takes care of you, Rusty. Yeah! Like you never been before. Yeah! Number six, black. Place your bets, gents. Place your bets. Just let me kiss you like you've never been kissed. Each kiss will tell you what I feel through and through. <laughs> so, darling, take me in your arms, kiss me to your heart. Number 22, black. No ho! I brought you luck, honey. Ah, <laughs> stick with me, gal, and we'll break this air off, bit. Black's come up four times in a row, Tony. You better quit while you still have some money left. Place your bets, gents. Place your bets. Red's bound to show up this time. Well, gal, do you think 22 will hit again? My customers don't usually come up twice in a row. Try double zero. <laughs> All right. Ten on double zero. Double zero. Yippee! Uh. And yippee! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Tony. Tough break, partner. Johnny, look, loan me your 60 oh, bucks. No, you don't, Tony. Johnny puts every dollar he gets into cash. Sure, he takes his 60 bucks and he buys three calves. Johnny, if you want to get a new herd, you got to take a chance. Loan me your 60 bucks, I'll split the winnings with you. If I'm lucky, we can restock your dad's ranch just like that. Come on, we've been partners a long time, John. <laughs> Give. I got a hunch of my own number, I know. Don't go loco, Johnny. Red's do up. It stays on four. It's Rusty's birthday. What's wrong with picking my birthday, Cowpoke? Oh, nothing. It's just 37 to 1 against the showing up, is all. Number four, black. Oh, yeah! Wheels, we did it. We did it. Oh, this will buy about 34 straight cash. Oh, Johnny, get your cash out. You've got to ride your luck. We can win a fortune here. Come on, come on. We're getting out of here before you crazy cowpokes lose your shirt. He's a gal. A gal? <laughs> Jake, hurry. Escort that gal out. She don't belong. 
wrong in here. <laughs> I'm heading back to Maverick. Coming, partners? <laughs> Mr. Blair, I'll go pick up Pa at the depot and ride home with him. Sure, go ahead, Johnny. Chores must have piled up around your Pa's ranch. So don't bother to come back today after tomorrow. Uh, thanks a lot. Good luck. Don't forget the spring round at Jamboree tomorrow night, Johnny. Yeah, we'll see you there, Johnny. Oh, well, you figuring on driving Rusty into town by yourself, huh? <laughs> There'll be three of us in that buckboard, partner. So long. Sure hope Johnny doesn't forget to tell his Pa half that money we won belongs to me. Meaning what? Now, you know how his paw is. Ever since the drought wiped out his herd, he's gone haywire. He gambles away every cent he can lay his hands on. Just like somebody else I know, huh? <laughs> Go on. Come on. Evening, Luke. Just saddling up for your paw, Johnny. Well, I figured it's about time for him to come on home. Hello, Pa. Well, home early, son. Guess that means you had no trouble on the drive. Oh, not much. Uh, had a brush with some sneak rustlers up near Spotted Butte, but they didn't get away with anything. Rusty plunked a bullet into one of them. Huh. Leave it to Rusty. I thought I'd ride home with you. Well, I'm sorry, son, but uh, I've got some business to take care of. Our paychecks come in this morning, Jim. Yep. Yours is in the desk. Thanks for settling up for me, Luke. See you tomorrow. Uh, tell Ma not to worry if I'm a mite late. You going across the Rio Grande? There's no law against a man playing poker? No, Pa, but you won't get a new herd from bucking them card shocks across the line. I lost everything sudden-like. I aim to get it back the same way. Two tequilas, Carlos. Buenas tardes, señor Paul. Dos tequilas. Muy pronto. <laughs> Mind if I horn in? We don't like IOUs, Jim. Only cash talks here. It'll talk. As soon as you cash my paycheck. Always was partial to railroad money. Well, Mac, this here's Jim Colt. Treat him real nice. His brother-in-law's sheriff over to Maverick. Seventy dollars. Cut. Tonight I break my losing streak. Maybe pay back all those IOUs. Money's here, Jim. All you need are the right cards. Hey, amigo. Gracias, señor. Mil gracias. I told you tonight was going to be my lucky night. What are you trying to do, Colt? Win all my money back in one night? <laughs> Got to. Tomorrow I switch to the night shift. Let us start. Jack. King. Queen, big ace. Bet's uh, five dollars. Call. Five and raise your five. Stay in. Five and ten more. Call. <laughs> Aces is back to back, eh, McAdoo? I'll just ride along. Folding. I'll take my next card down. 
Seven. Jack. Check. Check along. Twenty dollars. Stay. I don't reckon you've got a third ace in the hole. You're 50, and up 100. I feel lucky, too. Showdown? Suits me. Beat three kings. You dealt that third ace off the bottom of the deck, you dirty crook. Are you crazy fool. Quick, Tim, get out the window before the Rurales get here. business to talk over. Tell you more, I'll be in soon. Who's he? My son. How's McAdoo? Joe will meet us at the bar. He'll be right along. Jim's all the sweat to find out what happened after he lit out, Joe. Sit down, Jim. McAdoo's dead. Your bullet cut an artery. You're wanted for murder, Jim. McAdoo was an American, Jim. His killer will be hunted on both sides of the border. But it was self-defense. He went for his gun first. You, you both saw that. What did you say, Jim? Oh, sure. Sure you did. Now, take it easy, Jim. We bribed Carlos to forget you were there, and we told the O'Reilly's that the killer was a stranger named John Smith. You did? I'm mighty grateful to you for that. Grateful enough to help us out on a little deal? Sure. You name it, Joe. I'm your man. You said you go on a night shift as of now. Well, I was just fixing the saddle up now. The Western Flyer stops at Twin Buttes tonight. She's carrying a $50,000 payroll for the Army Post at Eagle Pass. Train robbery? Uh-huh. With your help. Me? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Then we tell the Warellis we found out John Smith's real name was Jim Colt, and that he drew first on McAdoo. Then they'd notify the sheriff over here, and you'd find yourself in a calaboose pronto. What do you want me to do? The Western Flyer leaves Costa Mesa about 7.30 and pulls into Twin Buttes about 8. Now, there's a station, and there's a woodshed. When the train pulls in, the mail car should be standing about there. Now, tell us what you do. I run across the mail car and hammer on the door and yell to the clerk I've got an important letter to mail. That's when we take over. Hey, Joe, 
What if the railroad changes its mind and decides not to ship that payroll tonight? How about it, Jim? The railroad always sticks to its schedule. Now, this is the night the flyer carries $50,000 to Eagle Pass, so the soldiers will get paid the first of the month. You and Tony taking Rusty to the Jamboree tonight? I reckon so, Ma. What's worrying you, son? Oh, nothing much, Ma. I was just thinking, that's all. Got to get on over to the depot. Well, Jim, you haven't had your supper. I ain't got time. Those men gone yet, Pa? No, we're leaving now. Who are they, Jim? Oh, quit nagging me, Martha. A man can take just so much. I, I don't seem to understand him anymore. It's, it's as if something snapped in his mind. Oh, Johnny. you knew the conductor signaled to open up. Shut up. Get over to that safe. Sorry, mister, but the Army Paymaster in Eagle Pass is the only one who knows the combination. Get going. But I, I, I... But I, I, I tell you, I, I don't know the combination. We stole it. I'll get fired for this. I swear I was in cahoots that... There it is, mister. All in gold and silver. That's no 50,000. I thought the rest fast. The rest in bills. Throw over there. Open the door. Pull the emergency cord and lay face down on the floor. There's a cut on both sides, Joe. I, uh, I'd better be getting out front. Don't forget the letter, Jim. What's the matter, Jim? Turning yellow? Man's bound to get nervous the first time. Remember what happens if that mail clerk don't open up. Get the 
zero. This side of Costa Mesa. I was making a pot of coffee. This guy knocked at the door. Well, I, I, I thought it was Bill. And then he made me pull the emergency cord and, and dropped off. Uh, let's telegraph the Rangers in Eagle Pass. Well, come on, come on, Jim. Hurry it up. Let's go. Lines down somewhere. Can't raise nothing. I just got a good look at the safe, Joe. It's wide open and empty. I think we'd better get across the Rio Grande. We'll wait a couple of weeks for the excitement to die down. Then we try again. Nice to have around, aren't he? You and Johnny. Forget Johnny. I'm here and he isn't. He said he'd meet us at the ranch. You know, you two worry about each other. Could be a bad sign. For me. I worry about all my men. Time you quit dancing with my gal. Johnny! Oh, what kept you? Some calves got loose. Well, I told me he saw some cougar tracks yesterday, so I couldn't wait for daylight to round them up. Watch out, those are my new boots you're stepping on. I know. Why don't you take them away? I missed you, Johnny. I guess I can take a hint. I kind of thought you were coming. I'm dreaming. Attention, please. The Western Flyer was held up tonight by a lone bandit somewhere between Costa Mesa and Twin Buttes. He got away with a $50,000 payroll. I'm forming a posse to scout this area for the bandit, and I'll need about five extra men in addition to my deputies. Will those men who came tonight on horseback please hold up their hands? I'll take you, Sanders, Buck Pettis, Johnny, Bert Steelman, and you, Hank Wayne. Get armed and mounted and meet me outside my office in 10 minutes. All right, boys. Well, at least I got half a dance anyway. Uh, just in case you get shot, partner, how about giving me my half of the winnings now? 
I got it stashed away so I don't weaken and give you any. That's what I figured. You know, you got a way of wheedling things out of me. We've been partners a long time, Johnny. <laughs> so long, Rusty. Be careful, Johnny. I'm sure gonna miss you, especially when I'm driving Rusty home on the buckboard. We've had no reports of any strangers in the area lately, so we figured the bandit might be a local man. We're going to check all the ranches in this area to see if every man can give a satisfactory account of his whereabouts around 7.30 this evening. All right, men, let's ride. breakfast and get on to work. Uh, Tony rode by last night to tell Ma you joined the posse. Find any trace of the bandit? Uncle Dan and his deputies are still checking the ranches. They've got an idea the bandit might be a local man. Well, uh, I'll be in in a few minutes, son. I think Dan's wasting his time checking the ranches. Not one of the local folk would do a thing like that. He knows where Pa was. He won't be doing any checking here. Well, I should think not. It'd be a fine state of affairs for Dan to be questioning his own brother-in-law. No, I'll still check him. Say, did you have some calves stray off yesterday? Why, no. What few calves I've got to keep pinned up in the corral. Can't take any chances on them. Why? Well, Johnny, I... someone told him that you didn't get to the Jamboree until almost 10.30 last night. I knew he'd hear about it sooner or later, so I explained you were out rounding up some stray calves. Never thought you'd lie to your partner. Where were you, Johnny? I was just riding around. You'll have to tell us where, son. Just riding around, Uncle Dan. I'm sorry, Johnny. I'll have to hold you for questioning. I know where he was, Sheriff. The other night we won 700 bucks at the Lady Luck at Eagle Pass. I wanted my half in cash, but Johnny there wanted to put it in the calves. What's that got to do with where he was last night? Well, you see, when we were kids, Johnny and me, we found an old adobe shack down in Red Canyon. We had a secret hiding place where we used to keep our treasures. That's where Johnny was, stashing away that 700 bucks so I couldn't wheedle any of it out of him. You should have scraped your boots clean before you came back to the Jamboree, partner. Red Canyon's the only place where there's any red clay that's wet. That's why he wouldn't tell you where he was, Sheriff. He's afraid I'd hightail it out there and help myself. Right, partner? Yeah, that's right. I don't know. Sounds kind of fishy. It does not. Tony's been pestering Johnny for some of that money ever Rusty. since... Rusty, that'll do. Well, if you don't believe us, Sheriff, why don't you ride out the Red Canyon and see for yourself? Get your horse, Johnny. Johnny, you show them where it is. You're doing all right. See what I mean, Johnny?
There you are, Sheriff. Just a minute. Let me take a look down there. You know, I had a hunch the old son of a gun was going to try and hide our winning. Convinced now, Sheriff? I'm convinced. Better find a new place to hide it, Johnny. Don't worry. I will. Put him back. Don't want to get my share now? I'm busted. I know a hiding place where there isn't any red clay around. Keep this for us until we get ready to buy those calves. She is bueno, senor. As soon as the little ones are weaned, we will have plenty of rich Jersey milk and cream. Tony, please to shock some feet down. The mothers are hungry. Sure will. Don't let Johnny get any of my dinero. I'm putting it away right now. Hey, Johnny. How many calves do you and Tony expect to get for the $7? Oh, 34, maybe 35 if we're lucky, Mr. Blair. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if I have about 40 extra calves I'd like to trade for that amount of money. You got yourself a deal, Mr. Blair. Thanks a lot. What brand do you aim to use, Johnny? Best brand in Texas. Flying R. Flying R? Now, why in the world did he pick the Flying R? I kind of made you sweat, didn't I, partner? Yeah, you did. Boy, was I surprised when I found all that loot. You act like you're sore. I'm the one that ought to be sore. Fine partner you turned out to be. Pulling a 50,000 buck robbery and not letting me in on the deal. Where is it? Somewhere near where it was. Why? You figured I'm bucking the wheel again with the lady luck? I've got other plans for it. Both of us have, partner. I'm turning the whole 50,000 back to the railroad. Give it back to the railroad? Are you crazy? I'm giving it back. Johnny, look, we're partners. We got our hands on 50,000 bucks cold cash and nobody even suspects us. All we got to do is lie low for a month or so till the excitement dies down. Then we head for California. We buy ourselves a big spread. It's a chance of a lifetime. Are you going to tell me where it is? Or do I'm I have to wait? I'm taking that money to California. Nobody's going to. Kindly tell me what this is about. Ask Johnny, it was his idea. Yep. I'm waiting. I'll unsaddle for you. I think I know why you two were fighting. Do you? You were all set to throw a gun on the sheriff this morning because you were afraid he'd find something else in that cash beside the 700 bucks. I figure Tony swiped that something else to protect you. He wants to return it where it belongs, and that's why you two were fighting. Better tell it to the sheriff. I... I didn't mean it that way. 
I'm sorry, Rusty. Everything will work out all right. Why'd you do it, Johnny? I had my reasons. That hurts, Johnny. That really hurts. Afternoon, Mr. Hobbs. I want that shirt you got in the window, that fancy orange one with the silver concho trimmings. <laughs> Looks as though you need a new shirt, Tony. I'll get it for you. Arrived from St. Louis just a couple of days ago. Boy, that's for me. Oh, I can read. I'm real smart. Twenty dollars, huh? Mind if I try around for size? Use my office if you care to, son. Thanks, I will. Be sure and draw the curtains. Ladies. I was going to give him a treat. Howdy, Hobbs. Howdy, Dan. Out of tobacco? I'll take a couple of sacks. Help yourself. How do you like my new shirt, Sheriff? Mighty fancy, son. Twenty dollars. New and bright. So are these. Where'd you get them, Tony? Man's got a right to have money in his pocket, hasn't he, Sheriff? Some of that stolen payroll was in freshly minted silver dollars. There's all kinds of silver dollars floating around. Maybe. But this morning you were flat busted. Yeah, but this afternoon I coaxed Rusty into giving me some of that dinero she's been holding for Johnny and me. Not if I know Rusty, you didn't. You're a mighty suspicious hombre today, aren't you, Sheriff? First it was Johnny, and now it's me. Like you said, I'm a mighty suspicious hombre today. So we'll just take a ride out to the bar B and ask Rusty. for his neighbors. He's a good man. You don't have to leave for the depot for an hour yet, Jim. Saddle's inch busted this morning. Gonna mend it. Once I have a little talk with you. He's waiting for you across the river. He's been putting pieces together, Jim. They spell double cross. What are you driving at? You went by your house last night before we went to the depot. Joe says you tipped your son off and he's the one who grabbed the payroll. You tell Joe he's crazy. Don't go committing suicide, Jim. Not until after you talk to Joe. What's the matter, Paul? Stay out of this, Johnny. Paul's all through with you. Start traveling. 
Do you ever hear of the Apache gang, kid? Sure. Bunch of killers and train robbers. If you want your pa to stay alive, you better let him come with me. My boss is Apache Joe. I just said, Paul's all through with you. Jim! Johnny! Are you all right? Everything's fine, Martha. Just caught us a polecat, Ma. Hit the saddle. You better watch your kid, Jim, or he'll be putting a noose around your neck. I'll be seeing you, kid. Tell Apache Joe we'll be waiting. Nice friends you picked, Paul. I sure didn't know they were the Apache gang. How much do you know, son? Enough. How come you happened to tie in with those buzzards, Paul? Oh, I shot an American in a poker game across the line. Well, he drew first. Apache Joe and Cater were the only witnesses. And they blackmailed you into helping them, huh? That's right, son. That train robber sure saved my bacon. Well, from now on, they got two colts to deal with, Pa. Have you seen Tony? Oh, is he in trouble? He'll be in a whole lot worse if I don't find him before the sheriff finds me. Well, wait a minute, I'll go with you. a new shirt, could you? I'm Dinger, ain't it? The sheriff stopped by the ranch today to ask if I'd given you any of Johnny's money. What'd you tell him? Nothing. I was in my room when I heard him telling Dad, so I let out through the window. That's my girl. There. That's so I can truthfully tell the sheriff I gave you some of Johnny's money. But just pray he doesn't ask when. Now you can give the payroll back like you were going to. I got a better idea. We're all partners. Let's take the money and go to California. This is no time to be funny, Tony. It was Johnny's idea to give that payroll back to the railroad. But me, I can't see giving 50,000 bucks back to anyone. Now I'm taking that money and going to California and buying me a ranch. That's why we're fighting. Well, maybe I'm not very smart because I'm just a little confused. Where'd you hide it? Around here. I'll remember where when I'm alone. It won't be for long, not with the posses out hunting you. Let them. I'll hightail it across the Rio Grande till they get tired of hunting me, then I'll... Duck back here, pick up the payroll, and light out. That's where you're wrong, partner. Because from now on, I'm sticking to you like a saddle burr. And I've got a gun, you haven't. I'm warning you, Tony. I'll use it if I have to before I let you take that payroll to California. We'll have to sleep sometime, won't you? And I'll hog tie you before I do. I've got just one question. You want to give the payroll back, so you didn't grab it for the money. But then for Pete's sake, why did you take it? Yeah, tell her, Johnny. I'd like to know, too. Sorry, Rusty. If I were willing to tell the sheriff a small lie and say that I found the payroll accidentally, we could all go back to punching cows. It's up to you, Tony. Uh-uh. If it meant your life or Johnny's, I would, Rusty, but it doesn't. And I figure I'll never have another chance to get my hands on 50,000 bucks again. Well, you'll never get away with any of it. Not with me for a shadow. Come on. But you're going to get awfully tired of chili beans and tortillas. So long, Rusty. I'll see if I can talk some sense into this bonehead. Flying R. 
best brand in Texas. I'll get her. Oh, Rusty. Sheriff wants to ask you a few questions. Sure, Dad. I stopped by yesterday afternoon to find out if you gave Tony Ballou some of Johnny's money. Yes, I let him have some. Well, then, can you tell me why in tarnation he broke arrest? Maybe he just felt a sudden urge to be alone. Rusty, this is a serious matter. Sure it is, Dad. But how would I know why he did it? You know what a crazy galoot Tony is. Johnny didn't come to work this morning. Any idea why? You rode over to the Colt Ranch late yesterday to see Johnny. My brother-in-law Jim said he saw you, but he didn't hear what it was about because you both rode off. Well, after overhearing you telling Dad Tony was in trouble, why wouldn't I hightail it to Johnny? He's out looking for Tony now, hoping to talk some sense into him. For Pete's sake, all he did was to light out on you and you act like he's the lone bandit that held up the Western Flyer. We know that Tony didn't do that, but he's up to something and I aim to get to the bottom of it. Any more questions, Sheriff? No, not just now. Later, maybe. By the way, Rusty, the railroad's offering a $5,000 reward for the return of that payroll. Why are you telling me that, Sheriff? No reason, just point of information, that's all. What goes on? Oh. <laughs> well, what is it, a revolution? <laughs> oh, just some kids. Did you have a good siesta? Nothing will be good till I get rid of you. What time is it? Almost sunset. I'll untie you and we'll go have some of those chili beans and tortillas. Thanks. I'd get rid of you and your gun. Look, Tony, try thinking back a few days, will you? I'm trying. We had 700 bucks to start a new herd and no trouble with the law. Everything was fine. The only real problem we had was who gets rusty. It's a good life, Tony, and like Rusty said, we can still go back. One little talk, kid. Well, thanks for taking his hardware. It's Apache Joe. He's wanted stateside for murder and a lot of other things. That's Cater. How's your hand? Still bad, I hope. Outside. Quiet. Your pa took you off to grab that payroll, kid, so now you're gonna write him a note. You tell him to hand over that payroll or he ain't ever gonna see you again. Pa never took me off. I was hiding in the barn when you made your plans. I took that payroll to prevent him from getting mixed up in a robbery. Oh, Shut up! Where is it? In a safe place. Uh -oh. no, wait a minute! You're working on the wrong hombre. I helped Johnny grab that payroll, but he wanted to give it back to the railroad, so I hid it on him. That's why he's riding hurt on me. But I don't give that much money back. Not to anybody. You're lying. Yeah? Here. New and bright? 
came from the payroll. Only I made the mistake of spending some of it in Maverick. Now the sheriff's got his posses out looking for me. What's your name? Tony Ballou. I heard about you. <laughs> now take us to it. In a couple of weeks or so, they'll get tired of hunting me. Then we'll go dig it up. All right, kid. Meantime, you trail along with us. Good. That way I'll get rid of Johnny over there and you and I will have time to argue about your cut. That's right. Don't be crazy, Tony. The only thing Apache Joe will let you have is a belly full of lead. Oh, oh that's where you're wrong. I'm the only one who knows where that payroll is. I'm the head man in this rodeo. Oh, by the way, Johnny and me over there don't quite see eye to eye on financial matters, but he's my partner. Any harm comes to him, no deal. Hold him till we ride out. But treat him careful. See you in California, partner. Grab his other arm, Mac. So you want to know how my hand is, huh, kid? Pachi Joe said treat him careful. You've done enough. Let's go. Come on. Now, kid, we talk about that payroll. Where'd you hide it? Uh -uh. All I want to know is about where it is. We got to make plans. Somewhere near Red Canyon. Red Canyon? That's about 10 miles west of Maverick, three north of the Rio Grande. That's right. We're picking up that payroll tonight. I told you the sheriff's posse is a comb in the area. Sure, I know, kid. But if there was a good fire in Maverick, flames would be seen over 20 miles. And that'd draw the posse back to Tom Pronto. So he crossed the Rio Grande to Regal Pass, loop around where there ain't no posses, and into Maverick from the east. Not with me, you won't. Maverick's my hometown. They all know me. You're coming along with us, the Maverick kid. Time to a saddle. some sidewinders in the cantina. They were led by a bandit called Apache Joe. Apache? Where's Tony? The railroad's offering $5,000 for the return of the payroll. I thought we might be able to persuade him to take it and forget his wild scheme. We might if we could find him. He rode away with Apache Joe's gang. Oh, Johnny. Well, he did it partly to save my hide, but mostly to get rid of me. He figures he's smart enough to outwit Apache Joe and keep the payroll to himself. But he'll never get away with it. Last thing he said to me is, see you in California, partner. The sheriff, Johnny. Hurry. I gotta get Tony away from Apache Joe's gang before they kill him. I can't do it by running away. Saw you out riding kind of late, Rusty. So I left the posse and followed along. Found Tony yet? Lost his trail in Del Norte. Figured he'd duck across the border. Appears though you lost fight there yourself. Some hombres had a notion I might know where to lay my hands on that missing payroll. Any idea why? Maybe because they found out I was a bandit who held up the Western Flyer. <gasps> I'm sorry, Rusty, but you'd heard about it sooner or later. I've been a hunting bandits a long time, son. But I've yet to see one walk up and voluntarily confess. I got my reasons, Uncle Dan. I understand the railroad's offering 5,000 reward for the return of that payroll. That's right, but you can't collect it. Tony could. So if you want to get that payroll back, you better get busy and find him. Because he's the only one I'll tell where it is.
Only for Lou. to bring the posses in fast. We'll give them a couple hours to get in. Then we'll head north and circle east, which ought to put us in Red Canyon about dawn. I like riding with this kid. Oh, great. They recognize me in Maverick. That ties me in with your outfit. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Just want to make sure you had to be on our side. I'm sure not. Almost. Then how about cutting me loose? In case one of the posses forgets to come in, I don't want to meet at Hogtide. Cut them loose, but watch them close. Did start. Some strangers started shooting up the town and fired the livery stable when they left. One of them was that young hellion, Tony Ballou. Tony, you sure? Certainly I'm sure. He was still wearing that fancy shirt I sold him. Johnny! Come back or I'll shoot! at the depot, Pa. Well, I was worried about you. I got Luke to take over for me. Johnny, where have you been? Your head. Oh, it's all right. I don't want you and Pa to get mixed up in this, so you'd be a good gal, will you, Ma? And don't ask any questions. I need some grub and blankets fast. Here, Rusty, give me your gun. Here. I'll take a carbine instead. I like to hit what I aim. Give her mine, son. I'll get the blankets. You see here, I'm Rusty. I'm sticking, so don't argue. I'll help you with that grub, Mrs. Cole. Thank you, Rusty. It's there in the cupboard. Johnny, are you sure there isn't something we can do? I started this thing. I got to see it all the way through. Get him up, Johnny. Now turn around. Lower your hands together. I'm sorry, Johnny. I've got no choice. Do you realize you're obstructing justice? You're under arrest too, young lady. Aiding the escape of a prisoner. You're jail equipped to handle women, Sheriff? No, it isn't. But the county will be glad to pay for itself for you in the jail at Eagle Pass. Don't move, Dan. Don't make me shoot. Now unlock those handcuffs. Johnny has confessed to holding up the Western Flyer. Mixing in will only cause you a heap of trouble. Be hard on Martha, too. I should have mixed in long ago. Snap him on him. Now, where are we heading, son? We gotta try to rescue Tony from Apache Joe's gang before they kill him and get away with that payroll. Just because a man's a sheriff, it doesn't mean he can't be human. 
Sure he can, Rusty. But that has no bearing on this case. Johnny's admitted he held up the Western Flyer. He's committed a crime, hasn't he? Well, sort of, maybe. But he didn't want the payroll, and he's trying to give it back. Then why in tarnation did he take it in the first place? I don't know, but I do know Johnny. Oh, stop, Rusty. You're getting me confused. You're confused. How do you think I feel? I'm in love with a cowpoke. I'll tell you why Johnny did it. I shot an American named McAdoo in a poker game across the line. He died later. Apache Joe and a fellow named Cater were the only witnesses that McAdoo drew first. They were willing to clear me, providing I helped them hold up the Western Flyer at Twin Buttes. Well, Johnny overheard us making plans in the barn. And to save my fool neck, he grabbed the payroll first. Johnny committed a white crime to keep me from a whole lot worse one. I'd accept that, Jim, except for one thing. When an American is killed across the border, the Mexican Rurales notify us at once. I've received no such report on McAdoo. You've got to believe me, Dan. We gotta walk from here. But first, we talk about what cut you get from that payroll. We split it four ways. You know, I wouldn't remember where to find it. When a man's staked out over an anthill, he remembers things awful fast. There's lots of anthills around here, kid. Like your gun says, we split it four ways. Start traveling. Looks like you get another chance at him. There she is, fifty thousand bucks. buzzard.
Just my shoulder. Guess I won't be seen in California, partner. That dirty, low-down sidewinder. I'll take care of him, partner. You stay with him, Paul. Johnny! Tony! Oh, Tony. It's only me, partner. Oh, Tony. Stole that barrel from Johnny. He wanted to give it back to the railroad. Rusty, stick by Johnny, huh? Tell him I'm, I'm sorry. If you'll take off these blasted handcuffs, maybe I can help him. Where's Johnny? Down the canyon after Apache Joe. Jim. No. If Johnny's alive, I'm going to see that he gets safely across the border. If he isn't, I'll get Apache Joe. Jim! Jim! I only wanted it for Apache Joe. We'll do this together, Jim. He's dead. There's a pair, Uncle Dan. Apache Joe, back there. He's all through crossing the Rio Grande. Got the handcuffs? You know, I finally got this thing all figured out. Apache Joe was after that payroll. He could have held up the Western Flyer. But I already told you I was the one who held up the Western Flyer. Yeah, there's always some crackpots confessing the crimes they didn't do. Makes them feel real big and important. No, Johnny, my job's to prosecute, not to persecute. As far as I'm concerned, the real criminals in this deal were Apache Joe, Cater, and McAdoo. They're dead. 
And I don't figure the railroad's going to press any charges against a man who gunned down Apache Joe and recovered their payroll. And I was the one that said you weren't human. Now, uh, about that 5000 reward for the return of the payroll. That ought to go to the town to help repair the fire damage Apache Joe did. Good. But if I remember correctly, there's a $10,000 reward for Apache Joe, dead or alive, that you're entitled to. And it'll buy a whole lot of calves for your flying our brand, Johnny. Well, now, while I attend to things here, you better get Rusty on home. My dad'll be worrying about her. Tony said the only thing that would make him give up that payroll would be if it meant your life or mine. Remember? <laughs> 